Hello, everyone, and welcome to our today's webinar presented to you by Record Club and Meeti Startup Hub. Uh, today, we'll be joined by a great panel, and we'll be going through a topic of scaling up your venture without dilution and discussing various alternatives available to founders, startups, and growing businesses. We have a great hour ahead of us, and uh, we'll cover off on the various aspects that I think will be of the interest for the audience. Uh, to set the scene, what I like to do is give you an idea of some of the key topics we look to cover off today. Uh, so we're going to start off with the introductions of our panel and their backgrounds, and later on, we'll dive into the various alternatives available to the founders, because there's no single pathway to accessing capital, and we'd like to especially highlight the ones that help delay dilution. We're all familiar with the venture capital space, and um, but we'd like to discuss what are the options available to startups and their teams to scale up their business beyond that especially given the current climate. So we'll explore that. And after that, we'll do a deep dive into the various criteria and processes of raising capital and the role of communication and how does it impact the entire process for companies. And finally, what we're going to do is um, obviously it's quite impossible to ignore the current narrative, the current commentary around the market conditions. So we'll have a concrete discussion on the outlook for markets. What the panel expects to happen in the current um, in the coming quarters and years and how is it going to impact startups ability in the indian market and beyond that to raise capital so without further delay let me pass on to our uh, panel today we're joined by eklavya gupta who is the co-founder and ceo of record club and uh, jeet vijay who is the ceo of meti startup hub um over to you, Eklavya. Uh, thanks, Anshi, and hi. Hi, everyone. Um, so I think um, thanks for joining in, right? Like, uh, uh, it's it, interesting times, right? Like, in which we are living. Um, I think a lot's happening around us globally as well as in India, right? Like, as compared to the macro situations. And, um, you know, especially in the startup world that we are witnessing, right? Like, so many so many externalities that are affecting the way we run our business. I think it's uncanny. And the idea here is, you know, just have a candid conversation today between all of us and uh, discuss various options that founders today have uh, in terms of how can they a, basically scale their business, uh, B, you know, what are the different financing options that they have, and obviously leverage uh, meetees, uh, you know, expert advice on how they are nurturing startups, uh, it's capital advisory nurturing that is required at the current stage, right? For them to effectively survive and sustainably grow. I think uh, that's most important. So I'll start up with a 10 minute quick presentation to give you a broad idea on what are the different options uh, that the companies have today and why are we in a situation where we are. Uh, feel free to, you know, stop in between in terms of Q&A and then uh, take it from there. Um, just one second. Share my screen. Yeah. Cool. Um, so the idea is, you know, I think baseline is that founders today are very lucky to have alternative financing options. Equity historically has been very selective, right? And re with restrictive access. So there are ways to scale your company without dilution uh, by leveraging different types of capital sources. Uh, Record Club is basically, you know, like a fintech platform that facilitates financing for recurring revenue companies for all young startups that are growing. Uh, you know, they can unlock capital based on their predictable recurring revenues. And Meeti, I think, needs no introduction, right? Like, uh, it's a government of India's leading initiative uh, for uh, electronics and information technology companies, right? Uh, which we'll talk about in a little detail. I think Jeet is the best person to talk about it. Uh, but I think they're doing a phenomenal job uh, in the country to, you know, nurture the talent and give them the right platform uh, and support from the government side to get those, that going. Just a little bit on, you know, why this has happened, right? Like uh, where we are, there was excess liquidity in the markets post-COVID, right? 
a lot of money flew in because of central banks globally pumping in a lot of capital by reducing interest rates um, so that the growth doesn't suffer. Uh, what happens typically as a result of it is that the money that the central banks print typically goes for as speculative capital, right? And that is what happened even now. You know, it went to commodities, it went to emerging market economies, it went to cryptos today, right? A lot of risky assets that give you good returns, right? Relatively on a global scale. Uh, and hence, we've seen a big spike in inflation happening, right? Inflation today went up to, you know, at a 40 years high, right? Basically, uh, it's a problem, right? Like classic macroeconomics problem. Inflation is high, growth is not there, right? right? Like, so what do we do? Central banks have to now pull off liquidity from the market, right? Like, but they have to be cognizant. They delayed that process so that the growth doesn't suffer. But now, instantly, they had no option because the inflation levels, right? Especially if you'll see globally, are at levels like 10% 10, 10 plus inflation levels in the US and in the UK, right? That's absurd. They, they, those countries are at one or 2% inflation levels, right? Uh, the central banks globally have raised interest rates more than five, 500 basis points in the last three, four months, which has actually led to pullback of capital, uh, you know, liquidity from the market. And hence, all the capital that was going through, you know, equity, commodities, et cetera, has stopped suddenly. And there is a dearth of liquidity capital. And, you know, these are all things of, you know, uh, you know momentum, right? Like once you start pulling back capital, people get more fearless. Uh, fearful people are more scared to invest because they don't know what the global scenario would be uh, and you know it gets into which the cycle and that is where we have landed ourselves in um, typically you know equity was the only option uh, that you had uh, great great play gives a good head start but you know once you start generating certain revenues you should leverage other forms of alternate capital where you can raise capital uh, obviously, it doesn't come with any kinds of guarantees, no obligation to pay capital, uh, but you lose ownership, right? Like not the best of option in the long run. So you should definitely manage your cap capital stack efficiently, right? Like as you grow. A traditional debt and loan, very restrictive, right? Like you don't have collaterals to pay. You don't have any mortgages to pay. So typical loan are not available to startups, right? And I think... Uh, uh, even if they are, you know, what they take is, you know, in terms of your part equity share, right? Like in terms of venture debt that takes part of your warrants uh, or your, you know, some amount of equity upside, uh, which again is not non-dilutive, right? Uh, and still limited to a very large sector of society. So what do you do? Companies went on taking equity, right? Historically. And as a result, you can see, right? Like some of the larger companies like, Zomato, Policy Bazaar were less than 5% in shareholding, right? Like they kept on diluting round by round. And as a result, you know, they have massively diluted themselves, right? And other than dilution, it's also the time and effort that they end up spending, right? Equity is easily a nine to a 12 month process, right? Like it takes a long run process uh, to actually raise equity capital, right? You start from preparing pitch text to reaching out to hearing a lot of yeses and nos, or maybe, right, like uh, then you finalize the term sheet, then there's a due diligence and a documentation process. It founders are not able to focus on what they do, right? Even in terms of debt or the venture debt options that are available, right? That comes in only if you raise equity and still takes five, six months, right? Like, so it, it's painful, right? Like, and everyone, I think all founders have faced it somewhere down the line that it's not as smooth and as easy. Equity I spoke about, right? Like comparing different financing options that are available to you. I think founders today, as I was mentioning earlier, are lucky to have different options. And that is what we at Record Club are also, you know, bringing in one completely innovative way in which you can finance yourselves purely based on your recurring revenues and cash flow streams, right? Um, equity takes a lot of time, right? Uh, <clears throat> is limited to you know very few number of companies hardly one or two percent of startups are able to raise equity right um, what happens to the balance 98 right like we know a lot of them die due to lack of capital at the right point in time some of the ideas may be great path breaking but unfortunately they're not able to grow venture debt comes with warrants still a high cost including cost of warrants and only comes in when you have raised equity right 
then there are certain options that have been introduced like revenue based financing right uh, which values based on your revenue but the way they charge you is a percentage of your revenue back to pay them back and if you are a fast growing company is actually penalizing you for growth right uh, otherwise it's a great idea great model but it's more suitable for cyclic and volatile business and i think what we introduce is a new asset class called recurring revenue financing where you can finance part of your customer cash flows upfront it's like your customer that was supposed to pay in the next 12 months have paid you today simply right and you precisely know what to pay how much to pay and you can raise up to 50% of your annual recurring revenue that to within 3 to 4 days right uh, so i think this has been truly revolutionary the way we think you know the way we act and obviously there are there are tech enabled ways in which we do it which reduces the exact cost right and and the time in which you are able to finance right what is the founder need right like founder for founders there are two most important things time saving time and saving equity right that's what we focus on i think both because those are the two most important things founders run, know how to run their business right uh, absolutely but it's the time and the equity that they want to focus on as they grow for us i think the new way that i was talking about you know you need to have recurring predictable revenue from your existing customers we start with as low as you know recurring revenues of 75 lakh rupees inr right like so that's around 6 lakh rupees of monthly recurring revenue if you have more than that you are eligible for our kind of financing uh, runway should be greater than 6 months right like uh, if you burn cash if you are a cash positive company obviously this doesn't matter and you should have one year in existence as a business right if you have all these three things right you are instantly eligible you can log into our platforms and you know you'll know the results within within a couple of days so i think one very important thing in general on how what to focus in the current macro environment is company should focus on some key metrics that we also look at as business right so i'm putting it out here as well as you know in general it's a good business practice to focus right uh, you should focus on your growth right like uh, businesses in the great segment is what i'll talk about you know you should have a growth of 3x gross margins of around 70% plus you know net dollar retention which is a great metric you know you should have at least around 140% plus then you're a great company right if you can focus on that um, the payback period right like that that you get to break even in terms of the customer acquisition cost you spend should be between 6 to 12 months and the burn multiple which is a very important metric which is basically you know the additional revenue by the the new arr as we call it or the new additional revenue divided by you know the capital you spent or the burn you do right if it's more than if it's less than one you know it's great if you if you are burn sorry the other way around right like so if you are burn divided by your arr so if it's less and you are able to generate more revenue for less burn right it's phenomenal so i think focus on these four five metrics you know as you build and scale your business uh, and capital will follow right like whether it is equity whether it is alternate capital uh, it will follow right like so it's very important as founders uh, to focus on these business, uh, these key metrics uh, companies have used you know recurring revenue financing in a lot of ways uh, you know there's an hr tech saas companies as a case study that you see here you know they grown 4.7x uh, by the taking record capital without dilution in the last 6 months uh, they grew from around you know $75000 arr to around $350000 arr uh and it's phenomenal right now they have a lot of equity offer that they can bank on and grow similarly you can help you know reduce your dilution it was a company growth stage marketing tech company which had an offer of around you know 800000 for 15% dilution when uh, you know 8 9 months back uh they started with record you know they've grown 2x since then they started with a small limit 150000 which has increased to 400000 now right uh, and after 6 months they got equity offer from the same investors right uh, which was 30% more capital like 1.1 million dollars roughly and 5% low dilution right so effectively it's been almost a 50% saving in equity dilution that they would have done right so that's the power of using and complementing these types of capital with equity right we strongly suggest anyone who has some predictable revenues to use this kind of capital in their capital stack so this is a high level thing i'll not bore you with too many things right like uh, just to give you a broad perspective of what are the different options that you have today and how can you really you know leverage them to grow your business sustainably thanks
Thank you so much, Iklava. I think uh, that was a great uh, insightful conversation. And I think uh, to all the founders present with us, uh, I think considering the current economic environment situation, things might feel or might get worse financing options at our disposal right now. The key, the key goal is no longer to survive, but also to thrive. Um, so I think, um, uh, Jeet, if we could, um, if you could come up to the stage and probably, you know, just say hello to our attendees right now and um, also reflect upon the current funding environment and what do you think, and just your thoughts on the liquidity available to founders right now. No, thank you so much, Sashi. Uh, and uh, thank you, Kalavya, for uh, the quick brief intro that you gave on this financing option. and. Uh, Welcome to all the participants here today. And so Mighty Startup Hub is actually really focused on building the startup ecosystem. And one of the things that we really care about is bringing more capital into the ecosystem, especially in the current macroeconomic condition. As for a year, right before this meeting, I had a meeting with the SBI leadership team because even they are coming up with the startup uh, branch, right? Because this is the change in the paradigm that is happening uh, given that you know we are in what everyone seems to call the funding winter, there's a lot of funding that's drying up. And as it is the you know money used to come for the late stage growth equity startups, so they were able to raise money. But for more than 85% of these startups, the funding was always an issue. And that has become a lot more difficult, especially because everyone has started pulling back their hands and everyone is in a wait and watch mode in terms of funding. And in this time and environment, it becomes critically important for new uh, you know, segments of the funding value chain to be created. And the Recur Club is operating in that, uh, providing recurrent-based financing. And that can actually really help startups now in two ways. One is for the startups that are not able to raise money, it's a great source to get the cash flow based financing in terms of what's uh, you know predictability of your revenue stream. Second is given that the liquidity crunch is there, the valuations are dropping. So you may not want to dilute any equity at this point and want to raise enough money to go on till the times get better and you build more traction and generate more revenue and get a better multiple for your business. So from that perspective, even for a high growth startup right now, this is a really interesting and an innovative funding stream that we can look at. Uh, so I think this is a really critically important part of the value chain that you guys are targeting. And uh, it's really good to see the growth that you have seen over the last year since you guys launched your platform and the support that you've been providing to the startup because we get really good feedback in terms of the ease of getting the you know funding secured through you guys and the way you guys have been operating and supporting them. So thank you so much for that. And uh, I won't take too much of the time. And I think this show belongs to Eklavya and these startups who are looking to raise money. Thank you so much, Jeet. That was uh, really, really warm of you to share that with us. And um, I think uh, I think as you rightly mentioned about the funding window, right? I, you know, we all like to hear your thoughts on how do you think, considering the current um, you know, economic times, how can startups actually uh, you know, grow their businesses more strategically and sustainably? And um, you know, if you could also shed upon some light into how Niti has been helping startups achieve sustainable growth. Great, thank you. So I'll take the second question first. Sure. So in terms of a ministry, uh, so we always look to fill in the gaps in the funding ecosystem where possible, particularly for the early stage startups uh, before they're ready for the market. So we have funding for idea validation, for prototype creation, for commercialization. We give up to 40 lakh rupees. We have an accelerator scheme where we are giving equity funding on the matching basis, equity, no debt um, for these startups. And also we are looking at building out more uh, funding options for the tier two startups because the role of the government is to build the ecosystem, not necessarily support and promote the winners. And I think that's where the private sector comes in. And that's where we work with uh, you know, uh, Ricker Club and the other uh, players in the private sector in the financing world, in terms of bringing that equity or the debt or the revenue-based financing options for these startups. Now, where we are, I think today, it, 
is critically important for us to think about the unit economics. It's not about the valuation and growth driven by valuation, but more about growth driven by value. And uh, the customer acquisition costs that uh, Eklavia was referring to, those kind of parameters become critically important at this time. That is it worth it for me to go out with a really massive growth plan when we don't know how we'll monetize them and when the cash flow will start coming in. So looking at unit economics uh, in terms of the business plan, then looking at the funding options because equity is becoming very expensive at this point. So a business is made up of three things, strategic alignment, operational enhancement, and financial structuring. So if your strategy is rightly aligned with the market, you will grow. But if your operations are not optimized and you don't have a focus on unit economics and the payback period, then you will suffer. So you have to align that. Third is you have to look at the your financing mix, debt, equity. I think there's some tiny issue with the um, Jeet's video. Um, in the meantime, I think um, as Jeet was talking about, I think uh, equity has definitely become more expensive. And why you've walked us all through about what you know Record Club is, what record, record, uh, recurring revenue financing is, and how it serves as an asset class. You know, if we could also talk about some other options that the founders have at their disposal, especially in terms of optimizing their capital structure. Um, if you could share your thoughts on them while Jeet comes back in. Sure, uh, Sanchi. So I think optimizing capital structure is very, very important, right? Like what state, any state of the company, right? Like it's become more important currently uh, because of the talk of the town. Uh, but I think if you see large size companies, right, publicly listed companies, everyone optimizes for capital structure, right? Like investment banks are paid millions of dollars just to optimize capital structures, right? Like uh, there's a lot of restructuring that we see in any stage of the company, right? And so we, it's very important. Unfortunately, in the early to mid growth stages, you know, people thought that equity is the only way, right, uh, to fund themselves because that was the only form of capital typically available. And hence, you know, there was no knowledge and because people were focusing on building the business, right? Like, uh, but I think uh, what one should think is what type of capital to be used for what kind of expenses, right? And hence, what are the expenses that you need to make and raise capital accordingly and build the capital stack accordingly, right? What do I mean, right? Like, I think if you are pre-revenue, right? If you are doing some kind of R&D activities, if you are doing spending money on an activity where the outcome is uncertain, right? You don't know what will happen. You know, then you should use equity because while you don't know what the outcome will be, you don't want any obligations on you to pay you back, right? Like equity is the best form of capital, hands down, right? But once you start generating some predictable revenues, right? Um, and you need to spend on expenditures that you know pay you certain return, right? On your capital investment or on your customer acquisition cost, right? Like metrics like LTV to CAC, right? Like lifetime value to customer acquisition cost. People should track it very, very deeply, right? Like, uh, because if you spend five rupees on something and you're able to generate 10 rupees plus or 15 rupees plus, right? It's a brilliant way. And if you know a particular marketing channel, distribution channel, a particular type of expenses will yield that kind of, you know, output, you should not use equity. You should complement it with other forms of capital if that's available or the recurring revenue financing that we've introduced, right? Don't use equity for that. Use equity as a buffer which will enable other providers to fund you, right? Based on your liquidity positions and use that capital to grow your business, right? That is that is smart business capital management, right? Like leverage is good, right? Over leverage is bad, under leverage is bad, right? Currently early to mid stage companies are operating at zero leverage, right? Which is, which is horrible if you'll ask any investment banker, right? Like they'll say, hey, <laughs> what is this, right? Like, um, so, have an optimum level of leverage, which helps you to grow and scale your business and see what are the kind of end uses that you want to use this capital for, right? Uh, typically, I think uh, in late stage companies, you know, people have spoken about about 50% debt to equity ratios, you know, between 40 to 60% debt to equity ratios seems okay. But I would suggest for younger companies, I think that's a little too much. They should be a little cautious as they're growing, right? 
because there is little more volatility right in their revenues etc as compared to mature companies so i think there is no right or wrong number but at least a 20 30% mix for debt to equity i think that's a good number for companies to go with as they scale and build businesses and i think what jeet said right like building capital stack is one thing focus on your operational metrics and strategy right capital yes. will follow right and especially at this time and for any business right if you have to focus on your unit economics i totally concur what what jeet was saying right other things will follow suit but i think 20 to 30% debt to equity ratios or leverage in other forms complementing equity is a good number for early to mid stage companies uh to balance their stacks sure so i mean as you mentioned that you know growing startups should look at different um uh, options as well uh to raise capital so can you share one example where in any growth any growing startup has uh, kind of successfully used tap by tapping into various uh, different pools of capital any example that comes to your mind it was it to me or to jit uh to you i okay. think uh it's so cool no i think a lot of them right like so we work with over uh, you know 300 companies currently and out of them around 150 companies plus have raised in fact 180 plus companies have raised actually equity capital in some form or shape right so they people have started to understand and they are complementing you know equity with alternate forms of capital right the company that i was talking about in in the case study for example right it's a uh media tech saas company they have been funded you know uh, uh now they have been funded by uh, marki vc like the 1.1 million dollar that i mentioned about at 10% and they used around you know 150k in 1000 dollars like 1 crore rupees from us initially which they increased to around 4 crore rupees over a period of time and now they have raised around you know 9 crore rupees of equity right uh, plus they had raised around you know 5 crores of equity previously so if i see their capital stack right so they have raised 4 crores of you know alternate capital like from us like recurring revenue financing and in their past around 16 crores of equity capital so debt to equity being around you know 25% so i think that's very optimal and that was one of our suggestions as well right when we work with companies we advise them what is the optimum capital stack to grow and they've used our money to spend in marketing to spend in software implementation where they know what is our outcome going to be and they've used equity to start a new product line to do some research activities right and to keep them in buff- as buffer right buffer money based on which we can give them more and more money our platform like ours can give more and more money great great i think now i think jeet is here as well so uh, jeet i wanted to ask you that uh, you know considering everything that's been going on in the market skills around uh, or create a story around their idea and uh, how can they actually be uh, reading or getting ready for raising their next equity funding round and uh, if you could share a checklist of you know things in terms of processes documents and compliance that they must keep in mind before raising their next equity funding round or at least the kind of uh, items that you know you you take into consideration see again uh, that's a very uh, valid answer to that right depending on the stage of the company uh, right. given their big vision that they're looking at and who are they targeting as investor because investors start all the way from friends families and fools and move up to the you know angels and then the vc funds and then the on the parallel track you have the social impact fund you have the government as well as funding so there are a lot of different funding agents out there and they all have different criteria in terms of what they look for even for the equity so a strategic investor will look at the equity participation in a different way than a financial investor right they may have a certain multiple return expectation in a financial return portfolio but for a strategic investor they look at it very differently but what i uh, really want to harp on is the point that lave was mentioning about the capital structure yeah. because uh, i think in india now we are in the first wave of uh, startup funding world and everyone has just been you know even in equity we don't differentiate between common shareholders versus preferential shareholders there is no idea about different kind of rights and uh, obligations that come with equity financing be drag along right tag along right pawback 
So when we think that somebody is trusting us and giving us money, there's a lot of devil in the details. Because yeah. ultimately, whoever writes the check writes the rule. So you uh, lose control every time you raise equity financing. And the more you lose early on, the less you are able to explore the full potential. And if we're looking at more developed markets of US and other places, um, you will see the founders hold quite a lot of equity even till the end. The reason is because they have been able to manage the funding through the different mixes early on. And especially for a company with a predictable cash flow, uh, it becomes uh, kind of uh, you know, crazy to say the least to go and dilute equity. But if you can get growth through your own operations and funding wise, then it's really great to have some debt in your equation, some mezzanine, some debt and some equity. Uh, if you look at the leverage ratio of large companies, right? Uh, different structure, different uh, sectors have different, but uh, for example, Vedanta or in uh, anything you're looking in mining, materials, metal, anything CapEx are heavy, where there's more predictability, right? But there's high cyclicality. They have a different uh, cap structure, debt equity and mezzanine versus the software based. But the beauty is that uh, the cost of debt is always cheaper than cost of equity, at least in a inflationary environment right now. So if bank is gives it, then trust me, equity is going to be much, 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 much higher. And that's where you can look at something that's the revenue-based financing, where you are getting the best of both the worlds and not diluting equity too much. So having some debt only shows prudence and smartness as a founder because technically what happens is most of the founders are engineers and technical people. And so we focus less amount of attention on marketing and less on the finance. We only believe in raising the money, but not necessarily understanding what we are losing when we raise money. So having a you know, really well thought out uh, financial strategy is critically important uh, for any company to grow sustainably and scale and not leave you know, bad taste in the mouth as it grows because everyone is going to negotiate at every different level to take a piece of your baby away from you. So you have to be, you know, pretty sure that you really, really want to get somebody on your cap table, but you have to make sure time is also right. So look at the different funding options that we're discussing. And uh, um, Jeet, uh, the next question is for you as well. So can you, also, was and how how are you guys actually sort of enabling the founders and ensuring that the entire Indian startup sphere is actually on the rise and continues to you know remain on the rise by at least um, ensuring that all of us as founders are guarded by the right um, you know information knowledge funding of course as you said is one of the items but then also comes marketing, sales, your strategy, all of that. So if you could walk us through the various uh, you know, initiatives by Meeti. Sure. Uh, you know, so there's a lot of things that we do at the Mighty Startup Hub uh, to build the ecosystem. And uh, so we have our own funding schemes where we give grants, which I mentioned before. But more importantly, we believe that the startup ecosystem cannot be strengthened without the engagement of private sector. So we do a lot of work with various corporates because corporates are necessary for mentoring, for pilot, for uh, strategic investment, for deployment. So we are working with Google on different program, with Meta on a different program, with Dell on different, HDFC, HSBC. Today we had a meeting with SBI, Startup Bank to discuss how we can change policies and get startup funding under the CGTS scheme where there is a credit guarantee and back, government is backing it up. So we are even looking at how to make it easy. So we are working on the policy reforms as well. But aside from that, uh, uh, what we look at is we also uh, work with a lot of international partners. We have programs of taking Indian startups to US, Europe, uh, France, Germany, uh, Middle East, so Indian startups can have international market access. Third thing I think that I really want to touch on is that um, we are really focused on building the ecosystem in tier two and tier three now. So we are coming up with a new scheme that's going to be focused on bringing close to 500 crores of funding into the tier two startup ecosystem. Um, that's what is the pipeline. Another thing that we are looking at is in the startup growth value chain, 
uh, there is no funding scheme available for piloting, for doing a paid pilot of a project. So before a product is deployed, you need customer validation. For that, you need to do a pilot. And nobody's willing to pay for a pilot. So now we are coming up with a, we are in discussions and stakeholder consultation to come with a scheme whereby the ministry will fund some of the pilot costs for these startups. That way they can actually validate their product in the market. Uh, so that's the gap that we are trying to fill now. But so aside from that, it's uh, just about, you know, getting all the ecosystem together and see what relationships we can make and how we help our startups. And if any startup has any queries or interests or anything that they want to discuss with the ministry, we are always happy for engagement. That's wonderful, Jeet. I think we're all, all of us here about, are about leveling the, pay, you know, leveling the playing field for each and every founder, whether that be from tier one, tier two, tier three cities, right? And I think uh, Eklavya will also have uh, some thoughts on that. Um, so Eklavya, just uh, hi, like highlighting that and also connecting it with the entire review process that we have here at Record Club, because, you know, Record Club straddles between equity and debt. So what are the different things that you look for while evaluating a company? Uh, if you could share that with our audience, please. Sure. Um, so I think uh, good thing is that there are no rights or the board seats that, that we take. I think that's the first part that Jeet was mentioning, right? Like uh, in, in our kind of financing. So you keep control, right? Because why do founders start their companies, right? Like it is because A, they have an idea, obviously, but B, people like taking those decisions, right? Like maybe they're right or wrong, right? So the moment the control starts going away from them, right? It becomes a little, you know, less motivated from that point of view, right? Like, so even as an investor or a person providing them capital, you want as much skin in the game as, you know, the people running the show would have, right? It's only then when you will make money, right? As an investor. Uh, so what we look at, uh, you know, uh, is predictability in terms of recurring revenue. So I think uh, companies should have at least uh, INR 75 lakhs of annual recurring revenue, which is around six lakhs, six and a half lakhs per month, roughly. Uh, one year of operations, right? Like because a certain some amount of predictability, right? Otherwise, it will be too risky. Let me be honest, right? Like it's not that any investment can happen at any point in time. If you give debt to a company that has no revenue, what are you financing them against? That is equity type of investment, right? Like, so one year of vintage, uh, INR 75 lakhs of annual recurring revenue. And if you are burning cash, then have at least, you know, uh, three to six months of runway, right? Uh, so three to six months, because otherwise you are running yourself too thin, right? Even if you, if you fund them, if you have two months of runway, you have obligations to pay us as well you would land yourself in more trouble, right? Like than solving, solving for your problem. So I think as long as you have these three things, we can fund you up to 50% of your ARR, uh, right? It's as simple as that. Uh, and we do it through a tech way. We integrate with your invoicing softwares, financial softwares, and banking data, and algorithmically score your companies and recurring revenue streams to give you, you know, the financing limit and the details within, within a couple of days at latest. So you can get cash in bank within three to four days, as I was mentioning earlier. It's very simple. It's very straightforward. We want to keep it simple and that's deliberate, right? Like because founders get confused, otherwise what's happening around uh, and the process just keeps lingering around. So we want to keep it very straightforward, very simple. Uh, and these are just the three things that you need, uh, you know, to get financing uh, from like a club. Um, talking about simple, I think uh, what's not so simple, and we're all aware about that, is what's happening currently, right? And uh, very recently, in fact, yesterday, uh, Sequoia Capital's MD, Mr. You know, Rajan Anand, came out to say that it will take us a long, long time before we get back to the 2021 funding era, right? Because if we look at the latest reports, uh, 2021, like while 2021 saw a twofold increase in funding, uh, um, the year 2022 up until September, uh, there was a downgrade by 83%. So um, this is my question to both, uh, you know, Iklavya, you and Jeet, that what according to you has been the biggest shift in the investor perspective over the last six months? And, uh, you know, also, do you guys believe that this funding slowdown or as Jeet put it, the winter, uh, you know, the funding winter, will it be a short-term cyclic shift or will it last longer 
um, than let's say the next two quarters. And uh, you know, just just highlight what will be the investment outlook according to you guys for the coming quarters and the coming years, especially highlighting the Indian market. Do you want to go first or? Yeah, I'll take it. So um, see, from a government perspective, I think this is a good thing in the sense that uh, most of the effect is on the top level of startups, right? Uh, the bottom uh, three, four of the startups never really got much money coming from outside. So that's the first part. And second is this shows us that like back in the late 90s and 2000s, we had the hot money flowing out of the stock market. Now, same thing has become even for startup. It's a hot money. Money is just flowing out so quickly. All the commitments of $500 million, billion dollar next round, they're just disappearing in a heartbeat. So money knows no religion and no boundaries, and it's the most fickle of a friend. So can't really rely on the foreign capital market as much. So for us, it's a good thing as a wake-up call that India has been resilient before in the way we have structured the economy. And this gives more impetus for us to develop the domestic rupee capital investment ecosystem in the alternate asset class. So now even the government is looking more proactively. We are working more diligently to bring more uh, non-traditional investors into the investment space. So people who invested in land and gold and hotels and hospitals and colleges, we are trying to make them investors into this kind of funding now for startups. Second, we are seeing the traction from SBI. SBI being the leader of the financial capital market in India. If they have woken up to the need for the, looking at startups as a vertical, that validates the notion that startups are here to stay and the local money has to be made available for them. And third is it's giving more of the innovative startups like Ricker Club to fill in the gap where there is a gap in the funding ecosystem and these startups who have the revenue, but they know where else can they raise the money as a new approach. Otherwise, when the equity is available so easily, no one is looking at the downside of it. So now, you know, out of the necessity, people are learning about this new approach. So I think overall for the ecosystem, this is good. But to answer your question in terms of how long we'll see it, see, this is part and parcel of life. Economic cycles happen every 10 years or 5 to 10, however you look at it we'll see some downturns because nothing moves up in a one straight line. So we'll see some downturn now, which will again stabilize the base, make the good startups stronger, get the people who need to pivot to pivot faster and not throw good money for the bad money, start focusing on value and not valuation. And overall think about customer experience and the value of creation. So all these things will come out and make our strong ecosystem much more stronger and robust and resilient. So for us, it's a positive. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. And uh, would you like to share some, uh, you know, any best practices that come to your mind, maybe from your experience that uh, founders of, you know, growing startups should keep in mind considering the environment? No, I think I briefly alluded to that before, but I let uh, Eklavia talk more about it since he's more closely on the ground and sure. dealing with the pains and the hearing from different startups, what they're dealing with. Sure. Uh, sure. Uh, for sure. Uh, I think um, what we see, right, like I think the biggest issue is that people get swayed away by, you know, as Jeet was mentioning, if there is a lot of equity capital, right, like they will start running after capital, right? Like let them focus on your business. I think focus on the key metrics, right? Like and diligently track your numbers. I think it is very, very important, right? Um, companies who have made it big, right? all of you will see are data driven, right? Like have that approach uh, right from get go, right from day zero, right? Like don't let it be, I'm a startup, I can do whatever I want, right? Like great, you have the flexibility, but don't overutilize it, right? Uh, so I think focus some of the key numbers that you should definitely see is, you know, what is your growth rate, right? Like what is your revenue, revenue growth rates? Uh, like, you know, how does it compare to yourself and industry benchmark? So all the parameters you should uh, effectively, you know, uh, uh, basically take in mind that, uh, you know, you take into consideration. So revenue ARR, ARR growth rate, as I've mentioned, uh, I think I what I was showing in terms of grade, I think uh, some of the key metrics in terms of LTV to CAC, their burn multiples, keep your burns in check at this time, right? If 
if capital in general is dying down you know focus on your growth and don't spend just on anything right measure the roi what is it that you can potentially get you know what is the return on investment on any capital that you are spending whether it is human capital whether it is marketing initiatives whether it is tech initiatives whatever it is right like me- measure in terms of what you are giving and what you are getting back right um, i think few problems that people face especially in early to mid stages is forming the right team so i think uh, focus a lot on forming the right team which will stay with you for long term which align with your vision right uh, uh, people will make money in the process right like if someone is coming and joining you just for money i think maybe not the right fit they should align with your vision they should align with the way you guys work right like as a team as a uh, you know as build on that right like because it's it's a it's a fun thing that you're working in early stage startup right like leverage that culture uh, people leave a lot of long corporate jobs right like a lot of us have done that including ourselves right to have fun so don't let that fun go away but be razor sharp and you know work with the right set of people and have a clear strategy in mind right like i think very important in terms of differentiating roles within the team right on how you are bifurcating and complement each other right like like i like we say right like we complement to equity capital i think people within teams should complement each other very well right like the ceos or the founders are probably thinking one year down the line right like i'm probably vertical leads are thinking a quarter down the line maybe a people below them are doing day to day jobs right like so everyone should have their equal you know well defined role strategies and that is how the company will succeed long run so you know which a lot of people miss you know everyone runs towards one thing and then everyone gets swayed away i've seen it a lot of times in companies and you know then they get into problem and obviously the capital management thing that i'll not repeat that i mentioned i think very very important okay 100% agreed i think uh, it's very essential to have the right team the right fit and uh, we've all like experienced some of the other things that are not right in our you know in our jobs and our experiences but you know it takes the right amount of or the right quality of people to actually grow stronger from there and um, just just to kind of contact new on that uh, jeet i'd like to ask you that you know uh, you were working in the us maybe what kind of a culture um, was there and how has how have you um, you know seen a shift when you came back to india and uh, how did you come about starting and you know, operating and growing your efforts at meeti so i think uh, that's a long uh, long story behind it but uh, i'll tell you from my experience in us so i was running a fund there uh, plus i was the assistant vice chancellor for investments at university of texas system um and i had my background in private equity and late uh, late stage growth equity world uh when i compare the indian ecosystem with the us ecosystem so back in the 90s in us we had what's called you know vc culture but it wasn't venture capital it was vulture capital as well okay it was more about take as it was back in the 80s it was the lbo time so leverage buyout you you know put up the company take it private do the leverage buyout then came the culture of this venture investing but it was more vulture they were trying to capture as much of the startup as they could that's how it evolved uh and i see a lot of the similar parallels in india in the last decade here that uh, investors will without understanding how they are negatively impacting the future of the company will ask for unreasonable demands which is neither good for the entrepreneur or the investor or the business overall or the ecosystem where it distorts the expectation in the ecosystem but now in india quite a lot has changed uh, slowly we are learning uh, you know before it was just purely common shareholding right now people are starting to think about pref people are doing convertible note now where valuation is not possible now we are talking about this uh, revenue based financing and other mechanisms there is a debt venture funding also starting to come into the market so the whole funding ecosystem is evolving uh what i see from the difference from the entrepreneur perspective is here uh, just like the investors we are looking for quick uh, uh richment right we are looking for quick successes and that doesn't work you know when you try to do this in a hurry then you end up uh, you know replicating what was done in the us but that won't work in the indian market <clears throat> so we need to uh, look at the value that we are creating let's not run in a uh, herd right let's not have a herd mentality let's not all chase the same thing 
because then there's no winners in that kind of competitive environment. So the strategic big picture vision, what is the impact you're going to make? What is the outcome you're going to have? How is it going to improve the society and the world around you? Think about the purpose for creating something that you're creating uh, and not just making the money. Money is a byproduct for work well done. So if we are really able to execute on the vision, then India is a full of opportunity, be it in health tech, agri-tech, defense tech, med tech, industrial tech, clean tech, entertainment tech, food tech, you name it, travel tech, everything. There's so much opportunity as a startup in India to scale today. Uh, we just have to make sure that we are we have the right market fit, we have the right capital structure, we have the right team that we are working with, the right technology that can be scaled up, and right uh, overall stakeholder and shareholder management so that we can take everyone's interest together and the, create a win situation for everyone. And I think that's only the time when the, uh, when the ecosystem wins, the entrepreneur wins. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rightly put. Um, so, Jeet, uh, we have a question uh, for you that um, it's by Krish and he's asking us that uh, he's asking you rather that how early stage startups requiring monetary support for prototype development can benefit from meeting. Uh, so we have a type 2 point scheme which is being implemented through 51 different incubators across India. So you can check out on our website which incubators have those programs. You can apply to one of those incubators and be part of their cohort, and uh, you will get up to 54 lakh in funding uh, through that cohort for your uh, product development and commercialization. Great. I hope, um, I hope, Chris, you got your answer from here, and uh, I think we leave uh, Jeet's email ID and LinkedIn uh, link to you right after the webinar ends, so probably you know you can get in touch with him as well. Um, if there are any other questions that we have, anybody would like to ask now, probably write it on the Q&A box and we can take it up. If not, then it would be a, it would be a short, uh, one second, do we, sorry. So I think we don't have any other questions, um, but thank you so much. Jeet, especially for joining us at this time, and uh, uh, to the both of you and to the attendees who took our time to attend the session today. Uh, we'll be sharing the video link with all of you guys uh, as well, so that you can always go back and uh, look at the kind of look at the tips uh, that both Eklava and Jeet shared with you. Uh, we'll be sharing that with all of you um, shortly. Um, but thank you so much, everyone. It was a wonderful session, wonderful speaking with you, Jeet, uh, especially, and Um, All of you have a great evening, and uh, bye-bye. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye. Thanks, Jeet. Bye.